years ago, our babysitter, after she knew we were safe people to talk to, started telling my wife and I about our out-of-the-body experiences. Ever since she was a kid, it was normal for her to once in a while wake up during the night, find herself floating near the ceiling, see herself lying asleep in bed, float there for a few seconds, fall back asleep, wake up in the morning and go to school. She just thought that was a normal part of sleep, you know. Uh, she eventually learned to keep her mouth shut, that it was not a normal part of sleep. And I was able to, well, she asked me, you know, is that real? And I told her, well, it might be a special kind of dream, like a lucid dream. You're not really out of your body. Or maybe you're up there. So why don't you take 10 slips of paper, write the numbers 1 to 10 on them, shuffle them up so you can't see them, put them in a box after you go to bed, reach out, lay one out on the table, but don't look in that way. But if you float it in the city, memorize the number, check in the morning, see if you were right. I saw her a few weeks later. She said she'd done it seven or eight times. She was always right. Was there anything else interesting we could do? <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing sleep research at the time, so I took her into my sleep laboratory because I know these things were often associated with people almost dying. So I was very curious about what was going on in her body. So she slept through the night with her EEG and some autonomic physiological measures being done. I could peek in any time through the observation window. But after she was in bed, I told her, see that shelf up there? I'm going to go off in the other room, uh, generate a five-digit random number. I did that by throwing a coin over my shoulder at the Rand book of a million random digits. If you ever have trouble sleeping at night, there is a book with a million random numbers. <laughs> All right, take the five right above where the coin landed. Right there. Uh, she had several out-of-the-body experiences. She'd wake up afterwards and said, I think it took me about two minutes to wake up, but I was for a minute. Only once did she say she was in position to see what was on the shelf, and she correctly told me, oh yeah, the number's 25187. That was correct. Oh. Uh, then she moved across the country, and that was the end of that research. I was still young then and I naively thought, oh, lots of scientists will start doing this kind of research. This is so exciting. Uh -huh. But it demonstrated that you could take something as exotic as an out-of-the-body experience and learn something about it in the laboratory. And oh, her physiology, she was not near death, OK? This is her pattern associated with out-of-the-body experiences there. Um, I didn't recognize it, so I took these tracings to one of the world's leading experts on sleep EEGs, and we had 100% agreement. Both of us looked at it and said, huh, that's funny looking. <laughs>